In our previous video, we looked at calculating the arithmetic mean for our returns. And the arithmetic mean is our most simple measure of calculating the average return. Uh, and it's very widely used because it's quite parsimonious and also it gives us a value that can be used in further analysis. However, sometimes the arithmetic mean is uh, controversial because of the fact that the arithmetic mean actually calculates the average return that you would receive if you had have invested, say, a dollar in a particular asset at the start of every single period. Therefore, the controversy with respect to arithmetic mean is that it uses simple interest, doesn't take into account compounding. So if we wanted to calculate uh, returns that take into account compounding, what we need to use is log returns. Now, from the perspective of this particular course, we're going to keep things quite simple and just stick with the simple returns. But it is important for students to be aware of how log returns are calculated as they may be used in the future. So if I come back to my data example from before, I've got my price index for my portfolio and I've got it uh, changing across time. So we said that if I was to calculate my uh, arithmetic mean returns, I just look at the percentage change in that price index. For log returns, what I do is I type equals ln, which is my log function, of the current price divided by the previous price. So in this cell, what that's given me is my log return. And again, I can double click to drag that down to get my monthly series of log returns of my portfolio. Now what you note is that these log returns are actually very similar to the simple interest returns that we calculated in the previous video, although they'll be slightly lower in magnitude reflecting the fact that log returns actually take into account continuous compounding across the course of the month. Okay, so that would be the return on my market using log returns. Uh, sorry, return on the portfolio using log returns. And now I'm going to calculate return on the market using log returns using exactly the same principle. Equals ln, open parentheses, current index value divided by previous index value. And I'll drag that one down as well. So given that log returns are slightly more complex than uh, the simple arithmetic mean returns we looked at previously, it's important to know what some of the benefits of log returns actually are. And in particular, there are two key benefits. One is that log returns are additive. And the second is that log returns uh, actually reflect the dollar value of uh, returns generated by an investor who holds an investment over a long period of time. So let me show you both of those proofs. First of all, the idea that log returns are additive. What I've got here in my RP column are the monthly log returns for each period. If I sum all those values together, okay, I get the sum of all those different log return values. Now, equally what I could have done is I could have said LN, give me the log of the price right at the end of the period, divided by the price right at the start of the period here. Okay, so that's just the, the, uh, the, the log price change from the end of my period to the start of the period. And what we can actually see is, is I get the same as the sum of all those monthly log returns. Now that does not hold, that, that particular relationship does not hold if you use simple interest returns or if I just calculate the percentage change on the price index. Another really simple way to demonstrate the benefits of log returns is let's say that I've bought a stock today for a dollar. Let's say that at the end of the first month, the price of that stock reduced down to 80 cents. And then at the end of the second month, the stock's price was back to a dollar again. If I were to calculate my simple arithmetic mean returns as I demonstrated in the previous video, then I would get returns that look like the following. So I'd say equals the percentage change in the price in the first month, it's a reduction in 20%, going from price of a dollar to a price of 80 cents. And in the second month, it's a gain of 25 cents, going from a price of 80 cents to a price of a dollar, which gives me an average return of positive 2.5%. Now, intuitively, that's not really sensible. We started at a dollar and we ended at a dollar. You know, we look at that and we think, well, the dollar value of our return was zero. If we bought something for a dollar and sold it for a dollar, we earned no returns. But calculating average returns uh, in this particular way actually generates a positive return. The reason for that, as I said earlier, is because simple interest or the arithmetic mean returns we looked at previously are based on the assumption of uh, investing one period at a time. So if we invested a dollar for this period and we had have invested a dollar for this period, these are the returns we would have generated and this is the, uh, the average return which we would have ended up with. 
Now, if in fact, instead, the reality was we invested at the start of the first period and held across both those two periods, we know the return is zero and the log return will give us that result. So if I say equals LN, price divided by previous price, we can see that the log return in that first month was minus 22.31 and the log in the return in the second uh, month was a positive of the same value, such that if I take the average of those two log returns, I get a value of zero. Now over here we've got the uh, monthly log returns. Uh, we can just take the, the average of each of these series like we did before to get the average of the, uh, the monthly log returns. Uh, and that will enable us to calculate something that uh, is a little more closely uh, related to, to the actual dollar return of holding over a long period of time. Now, as I discussed at the start of the video, it's important to note that uh, for simplicity, for parsimony, we're going to use the simple arithmetic mean returns uh, in this particular course. But as, as students and as future uh, participants in financial markets, it is important that you know the difference between uh, both those methods, measures of calculating return.